Good evening and welcome to Contemporary Living with Farmer Hill. I am one of your hosts, Andre Hill, and tonight I'm going to talk about ways for you to build wealth. And as I talk about tonight's message, I need you to ask yourself a question. And the question I want you to ask yourself is, why haven't you invested in yourself? We go to football games, we invest in the football games, we invest in going to the basketball games, we will invest in buying Nikes and Gucci and, and all this other stuff. But many of us have failed to invest in ourselves. And a lot of times we say we want to be wealthy and we, we're tired of working our nine to five, but the average American is one paycheck short of being homeless. So many, many people struggle and, and many people there, they're having hard times. But you have to ask yourself tonight, why haven't you invested in yourself? And we're going to look at the keys to be successful, keys to be wealthy tonight, that we believe that will be beneficial to you. And the things I'm we're talking about tonight is me, me and my wife, we practice ourselves. And we feel that this is very knowledgeable information. And each week we try to make sure that we empower our, our viewers. But if you're on Facebook, just to let you know as I get into this message, you can follow us on Facebook at Contemporary Living with Farm and Hill. And if you're in the Chicago South Suburbs, you can watch our television show each and every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time called Contemporary Living with Farmer and Hill on Comcast Channel 19. So I'm going to dive right into it. And the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto thy fathers, as it is this day. So two things God gives us. He gives us power to get wealth. So he gives us, he's given us power and he's given us wealth. So let's look at the word power. What does the word power mean? So the word power means the ability to do something or act in a particular way, especially as a faculty or quality. So God gives each and every one of us the ability to do something or act in a particular way. So we all have some type of power in some type of way that God has given to each and every one of us. Now, whether you have tapped into it or not, that I don't know, but I want you to encourage you tonight. I want to empower you and give you some keys to wealth and success, success as you begin to go out in the world to be able to bless yourself and to be, be able to bless your family members. As the next word, it talks about wealth. Now, what is wealth? The word wealth is an abundance of valuable possessions or money. So that is the word wealth. So tonight we're going to look at it and we're going to see if you have some valuable possessions. And if not, I'm going to point, point out some valuable possessions that perhaps you can t t try to purchase or to attain for yourself as you begin to generate your wealth. So ask yourself the question as we go into tonight's message. Ask yourself the question is why haven't you invested in yourself? And as you begin to see the ways that you can get wealth, your mind is going to be blown and you're going to be excited and you're going to be encouraged because I'm going to empower you tonight on wealth and how to get it. So the first thing you need to do to gain, to gain wealth is number one. Number one, I believe it with my heart that you ought to always keep God first. That everything that you do, everything that you decide to do, you need to go to a higher power and consult God for some wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, some guidance and direction. And I guarantee you, when you seek God, he will open up doors for you. But remember, as you seek God, you have to get God something to work with. So you just can't pray and say, God, I believe you, that I'm, I'm going to be successful. But you have not went out there to do some work. So when you get out there and do work, God will begin to place people in your life that will be a blessing to you, that can help you succeed. All right? So number one at the top of the list is keeping God first. Number two, I think this is very important. You need a supportive spouse. You just can't marry anybody in today's world. You need a husband. If you're a husband, you need to find you a wife that's going to compliment you, uh, that's going to be that's going to be an asset to you, that's going to be able to help you. If you're a wife or you're a woman that's seeking to be married, you need to make sure and I pray that God send that husband to you that will be a blessing to you as well that you guys can build together. Because there's the, I mean, the power, there's power in marriage. And the Bible tells us when a man finds a wife, he finds it a good thing. Now, if you ever read Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich, and he studied 500 of the most successful men in the world. And one thing he find, found out that with all 500 men, they had two things in common. One, they had a high sex drive 
and two, they all had women behind them that made them great. If you look at your your modern day heroes, you look at you know your Martin Luther Kings of the world, you look at your Malcolm X of the world, you you look at your um, Barack Obamas in the world or your John Kennedys, they all had women in their life that helped make them successful. So this is very this is very very important. History has shown, stats have shown that whenever you in a two a, a two family household, that mean, meaning that you have a husband and wife in a household the family tends to thrive. So this is very important, making sure that you have a supportive spouse that's gonna bless you, that's gonna be a help to you, and that's gonna support you and you support, as you support one another to be successful. And you need a strong family behind you as well. But most importantly, you need to have a wife and a husband that's gonna be a blessing to you. So that's number two, remember that, that's very important. Oh, excuse me. Number three on the list, mental health and physical health. We have to be more health conscious. Now I ain't saying go out, you gotta be, spend all this money with a gym membership and all this other stuff, even if we can walk 30 minutes a day around the block. And the reason you want your mental and physical health is because it helps you think clearly. It helps you make right decisions. And then you have the energy to get things done. You know, the Bible talks about how David, he meditated on the Lord daily. And so your mental health and physical health is very important because I heard Les Brown say your health is important because this is the only vehicle you have that will take you through this experience called life. So remember that your mental health is very important as well as your physical health, all right? Number four, servitude. If you wanna be great in the world, if you wanna be recognized in the world, servitude is very important. Now I ain't talking about the ones on Facebook that wanna be seen that every time they go help the homeless, they gotta throw up pictures, or they see a homeless laying down on the ground, they gotta take take a selfie. That's not true servitude. Those are people that wanna be seen, and the Bible talk about those that wanna do stuff for eye service. So when they say talk about eye service, those are people that just wanna be seen, that wanna be glorified for their work or what they're doing. So understand servitude. If you ever wanted to read about somebody that served, look at our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For he served humanity out of love, out of dignity, out of respect. So servitude is very, very important as you start building your wealth. Number five, education. You have to educate yourself. And education is very important, especially when you're dealing with a certain craft. If you're doing tourism, hospitality, if you're doing event planning, if, you, uh, if you're a beautician or, or you have a barber shop or whatever your gift is or whatever your talent is, you want to make sure you educate yourself. And one of the books I always recommend is Dr. Claude Anderson Powernomics. This is a very important book, I think, especially in, for the African-American community. It teaches you how to invest in your community and how to serve individuals. And it also understanding this here when you educate yourself. We live in a capitalist, capitalist society. Whether you like America or you, or, you, or, 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 or you don't, you have to understand capitalism because it's not going nowhere. So when, you, when we talk about capitalism, pretty much everything is for sale. And you got to ask yourself, what are you selling? Who is your market? And what makes your business different than the next person's business? So educate yourself on capitalism. Understand the game. You got to know the game, just like the game Monopoly. Guess what? If you don't understand the game of Monopoly, you're going to lose each and every time. So educating yourself is very important as you begin to build your wealth. Number six, networking and partnerships. You got to network with people. You got to get out and meet people because guess what? Some of those individuals have resources that you may need and vice versa. See, partnership, you can do more with a partnership in a year's time versus trying to do something on your own where it's going to take years. So understanding partnerships and networking is important. Go to business seminars. Go to different local events that they have just to feed your brain with knowledge and understanding and get to know people. And now you will be surprised at the wealth of knowledge that's out there and surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals that can be a blessing to you as well. So remember, networking and partnership is very important. All right, number seven, we're gonna talk about some valuable assets. Remember we talked about wealth earlier? Here's some more valuable assets, and I'm gonna go into detail with, with each asset that I have here. All right, so understanding valuable assets. 
So we're gonna talk about property. We're gonna talk about land, trees, ponds, livestock, stock, business ownership, talents, and gifts, all right? So the first one is business ownership. A lot of people there trading time for money. What I mean by that? So what's happening is a lot of people, they're going to work, they're working the eight and 12 hour shifts, and they never tend to get ahead. Well, that's why you need business ownership. Even if you can start your business part-time, I think everybody should have a business. Well, a lot of people say, well, Andre, everybody can't have a business in the world. It's just not, it's, it's impossible. Well, that's, that's not true. Everybody can have a business. You don't necessarily got to leave your nine to five, but you can do your business part-time. And guess what? Your business that you're doing part-time may eventually grow into something full-time, as long as you're providing good customer service and you're providing a product that somebody needs. Not only that, business ownership gives you 400 tax write-off, so you get so you get deductions. And the country awards people that have businesses. This is a capitalist country, and it is ran off small businesses that's out there that's making an impact in the world. So a lot of times we get mad at the Jeff Bezos of the world, or the Donald Trumps, and say, well, why are they getting all these tax write-offs? Well, these individuals understand business ownership. And when you understand business ownership, then you'll understand that you have write-offs that come with being a business owner. So business ownership is a, is a, a good one here. Also, property. Now, the good thing about owning a property, that say, for instance, you have this house here, this beautiful home, and we're going to say that um, you're paying, you, you put a tenant in here, and the tenant is paying $1,500 a month to live in this beautiful home. And we're going to say your mortgage is, that you pay to the bank, including insurance, is about a thousand dollars a month. All right. So of that thousand dollars that you're paying a month, but well, that tenant is paying you for renting your property out. Guess what? You have five hundred dollars left every month. So the tenant is paying for your asset, which is your house, and then you you're pocketing five hundred dollars every month in cash flow. So not only that, the more you pay down your house. The more you, you put, into, put into your house as far as upgrading and stuff like that, guess what? You begin to build the equity in your home. And what you can do with that equity when it becomes a, a, a substantial amount, you can pull that equity out and go buy another house and maybe go flip a house or buy another house and put another tenant in and just continue to continue the cycle. So property is very important. So remember that there, all right? The next one we go into owning land for crops food and water now this is very important now if you can buy an acre of land and well on this acre of land if you can harvest stuff like cucumbers if you can grow cabbage things like that or if you can even put a well on your property guess what you now have means of food of feeding yourself and your family not only that you have water guess what we're going to always need food and water until we die so if, even if you can buy acres of land me and my wife, we started last year growing some cucumbers and cabbages. Our tomatoes was horrible, I have to admit, but our cucumbers and cabbages and our zucchini came out pretty good. So own some land. Own some land and pass it down to your kids that they may pass it down to their kids' kids. And as you begin to build your wealth, this is something that is sustainable that will hold you in case you need it, in case you need it. So just imagine you putting food on your land, you grow on food. Guess what? Not only can you consume it, but you make and sell it at the um, at a flea market or something like that. So remember, owning land is very important. Next, what about trees? Me and my wife seen something in the um, Kankakee area and uh, Kankakee, Illinois, where it was uh, about an acre of land and it had trees on there. Now the good thing about this this um, acre of land, it had walnut, it had walnut trees, it had maple trees, hickory trees, and oak trees. Now many may say, okay, they're just trees. Well, they're not just trees. The benefit of trees is walnuts. You know like how expensive walnuts are? Well, guess what? If I got a tree, if I can get walnuts for free, it's a no-brainer. Or maple syrup. You know how many how much people you know, people pay a lot of money for maple syrup. But guess what? If you have a tree that's producing maple syrup, I don't even have to go to the Aldi's no more or Walmart no more to get syrup. And look at that. I can make a sale of my tree. Don't forget what's made from trees. Your tools. Your paper. Matter of fact, firewood. You see a lot of firewood that they're selling at Walmart or you ride by um, different um, companies. They're selling wood outside. Well, guess what? That saves you money. Now you ain't got to buy firewood, but what you can do, you can sell it. 
So trees are very important. You can make a lot of money off trees because people make furniture with trees. They make tools with trees. There's so much resources out there, but in order for you to build your wealth, you gotta lay hold to some of these resources. All right, the next one, livestock. So I added grass and hay on this slide because I forgot to put it in there when I started off with land. But grass and hay, well guess what? If you have cows that you see here, your cows, they eat from what? They eat the grass. So is this saving you money? Because now you you don't have to go out and buy all this extra stuff. Well, guess what? Your cows, they are eating off the land. And you can bail hay. My granddad, to this day, he lives in Nacogdoches, Texas. My granddad is over about 85 years old. He still has he's still out there bailing hay at 85 years old, still driving a school bus. So I honestly I don't think he's ever gonna start working. I think he's gonna work until God calls him home. So livestock is important. Cat, um, cattle, chickens, you know people love chicken. Pigs, sheep, you know, you, you look at your cattle, you think about your, your steak and, and your pork roast and, and stuff like that. So understanding um, this stuff is important. Livestock is important, all right? Because once again, this is a source of food. Also, a catfish pond. If you find somewhere that has a pond, excellent. You know, ponds are very important. Catfish, catfish ponds, if you love fish or maybe other type of fish that's in your pond, this is a good source for you as well. So not only that, not only can is the catfish farm used for food, but guess what? You can sell your fish. Or you can charge people to come out to your pond to fish on a pond. However you want to do it, well, there's the way you can do it, okay? So these are ways that you're building wealth. But ask yourself, why haven't you invested in yourself? Also, you can play the long game. You can do stocks. Understand stocks, start investing in stocks. You know, I talked about earlier how we invest in, you know, Nike and Gucci and we invest in sports and stuff like that. Well, how about you be an investor and study a consumer all the time? How about you invest in those very things that you buy all the time? One thing I admire and I love about, about Shaquille O'Neal, and I was listening to one of his interviews, he talked about a lot of stuff that he invests in and stuff that he purchased. How wise is that? So he's not only saying that I purchased this stuff, but I also invest, I'm invested in it as well. I purchased this stuff, I use it for my own personal use, but yet alone, I invest in it as well. How smart is that? All right, so also, one of the things I like here is talents and gifts. In order for you to, to, to accumulate your wealth, you have to use your talents and your gifts that God has given to you. All right, so what is a talent and gift? It, one thing about talents and gifts, they are irrevocable, not able to be changed, reversed or recovered they are final so god has given each and every one of you talents and gifts that can't nobody take from you they may could take the physical man but that gift that god has put in you they can never ever take it so that's why you need to make sure that you are investing in yourself so I, let me read that again just in case as i get ready to close it out so what is a talent and gift it's irrevocable not able to be changed reversed or recovered it is final so your gifts and talents come without repentance, as the Bible says, meaning that what God has given it to you, he is not taking it back. All right, and one thing you definitely don't want to do is you don't want to do no wasteful spending. A lot of us, we are throwing our dollars right down the toilet. Why? Because we're investing in Nikes. We're investing in Gucci. And what else we investing in? BMWs. We investing in cars and things that we cannot afford. All right? Because we want to live above our means. We want to be seen. We want somebody to think highly of us. But yet alone, when we go to bed every night, we're suffering, wondering how we're going to survive the next day. So understanding this here, brand yourself. That's what I recommend. Brand yourself. If you got a wine business, if you have a hospitality business, whatever you have, you need to start branding yourself. Make your own t-shirts. Make your own hats. Make your own Nike shoes. Invest in yourself, people. One thing I like about Master P. Master P, man, this guy is doing amazing things. I like to follow him on YouTube because he is investing in himself and his family because he's looking generations down the line at his kids' kids and making sure that they are wealthy and they are prosperous in life. I was at a meeting uh, was, uh, a few weeks ago and they was talking about what is your business plan? How, how many years down the line are you planning? And me and my wife, we thought we was doing something. We're like, oh, we five, ten years down the line. 
They said, well, the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers, they're planning 150 years ahead of time. And me and my wife looked at each other, 150 years? Because they're planning on generational wealth. They're planning for generational wealth. They're planning to succeed. They plan, they're looking at their kids' kids, and they're looking years down the line. Even my wife, um, she graduated with a master's in hospitality. And she talked about in hospitality, and she talked about the city of Chicago. The city of Chicago, they're planning 100 years ahead of time. 100 years ahead of time. So, with that being said, I hope these were, I hope my message was valuable. I hope I was able to inspire you. I hope I was able to educate you. And one of the things I didn't put on here that you probably want to add to ways to build your wealth is um, life insurance. A lot of people build wealth off life insurance. They can take out a million dollar policy and, you know, they pass on. That money is passed on to their kids as well. So understanding that as well. So there you have it. Those are, you know, me and Melissa ways that we feel that people can build wealth. Um, if you have some other ideas, please share them. We always open to ideas. We always open to gaining, gaining knowledge and wisdom. So as always, we thank you for tuning in to Contemporary Living with Farm and Hill. And as always, I thank God for his unmerited, undeserved favor called grace. For grace is the total absence of any works. You can't work for grace. You can't buy grace. You can't sell it. It is strictly what God has given to each and every one of us because we believe that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day for our justification. On behalf of myself and my lovely wife, Melissa, and contemporary living, be blessed. Good night.